Hi there everyone, it is currently Monday the 18th of June 2012 and we have two full-fledged tropical systems out here in the western Pacific today. The super typhoon uh, Gucho pushing off here towards the north going to be affecting Okinawa later on today and also our newly formed up tropical storm Atalum here just towards the southwest of Hong Kong. We'll get to that one in a second but first let's talk about the major system here. This is uh, typhoon Gucho still moving off here towards the north it's expected to brush just along the eastern portions of Okinawa through the overnight hours. Uh, 12 UTC is actually right about 2100 uh, local here. 18 UTC is about 0, 0300 local. So the storm's going to be passing through your overnight hours here. So uh, I've been actually asking people to see, to see if you could take photos. Definitely would be a very bad opportunity to do that. I would highly recommend just stay inside and ride this storm out through your overnight hours as it continues to push off here just east of your location pushing off towards the rest of the Amani region before affecting uh, mainland Japan later on this week so at this time though I know for the military bases here in Okinawa you have been issued T-Core 1 it means a lot of the facilities on these bases have been closed down really just at this time time to start to stay indoors get ready for the storm as it passes by uh, don't venture out too much here as it continues to do so at least at this time uh, the uh, winds of 50 knots or greater should be expected here over much of Okinawa don't expect those main uh, core typhoon strength to affect much of the islands here that's this uh, core right near the center you can see it right about in this area it should stay just offshore but still typhoon strength winds could be affecting here just not those 100 knot or greater ones you might see some wind gusts up there though and also the possibility that you could be seeing uh, some uh, really heavy rainfall even flooding rains plus the risk of a tornadic activity let's take a look at the satellite image show you what I'm talking about here it is this banding here right along the northern periphery actually a very good outflow coming out of the storm right now well these uh, larger rain bands along the outside of the storm often have very high convective weather with them and especially with landfall tropical systems usually you see that very high risk of tornadic activity they're usually rain shrouded and fast moving thus makes them exceptionally dangerous so uh, definitely one other factor that be coming on play here even if you are not seeing that center location which is right here move directly over Okinawa but good news at least as far as the heavy rainfall I do expect it to be at least for uh, short durations here because you have all of this dry air along the western periphery wrapping around the storm system so uh, much better than being in the right front quadrant like we've been talking about the last several days actually the storm system was over here you could see this large cloud mass across this entire region that would be affecting uh, much of the Amani region here so very fantastic news that it is on the right side it does look like a lot of these rain showers that could be affecting here only going to be for a short duration through the overnight hours especially uh, basically the main impact at least at this time I think is going to be uh, the, the high winds that are going to be occurring also the waves near the coastline you don't want to be venturing out to the coastline at all here and plus that short time heavy rain embed it with some of these outer rain bands as it does rush by here towards the east and some of these rain bands are actually already starting to show phase here at approximately uh, 0 to Zulu or about 1100 uh, uh, Japan standard time. You do see some of these bands down here just towards the south pushing in. So these are already going to be starting to bring you some of those rain showers. These ones here in the blues only about 10, 5 to 10 millimeters an hour. Once you start to get those greens to the yellows, that gets up to those flooding rains up to about 20 to 30 millimeters an hour. So definitely uh, it's going to be very hazardous here. Now it also is going to be being very hazardous to mainland Japan after this pushes by. If we go back to that track actually here from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, you can see that they're expecting it uh, to make landfall actually down here near the Key Peninsula. If you remember last year, uh, the Key Peninsula was absolutely devastated by flooding rains from Typhoon Talos that made landfall in this area. So you can remember that this area is very prone to landslides. Heavy rainfall could be occurring as this does move on shore. I'm very happy the Joint Typhoon Warning Center actually moved their track over uh, towards this region region moving it across mainland Japan here by this time it likely will start dissipating very rapidly uh, due to the Japanese Alps though as it continues to push on shore but let's look at the extended for the Japan meteorological agent and I'm very pleased to actually say that they're matching up with the joint typhoon warning center in your eyes I have to remember the Japan meteorological agency is the official warning center out here in the western Pacific so I will definitely be putting their link into the description box below but at this time though they are expecting there to push that over 
the uh, key peninsula here just northeast of Shikoku. And really with the big problem, I think, once again here, just like what we were talking about last year with Typhoon Talos, is that you're going to have that low pressure center right in there. And some of these outer rain bands that are wrapping around, you remember that big cloud mass just east of the center of circulation will be pushing onshore in this region. So flooding rains are going to be a very uh, big risk, even landslides after this does push onshore carrying all that precipitation with it. But good news, unlike with uh, Talos last year, this is going to be very fast moving at this time. It's going to be going extra tropical at this time as well. Those winds from the center of circulation will start to spread out. So you're going to be seeing very heavy rainfall here. But I, I do think that above 50 millimeters an hour very likely going to be occurring, but it's not going to be occurring over a very long duration because you can see here, uh, this is actually by Tuesday morning right here. And then this is by actually Wednesday morning and then it's off there towards the northeast uh, going into Thursday morning. So a very quick moving storm, at least by the time it starts to move over mainland Japan. But as far as any significant warnings issued at this time across Japan, actually uh, the Okinawa region here, you are already seeing some high wave warnings being issued. If we click on that link there, go down, you can see that all these areas are under high wave warnings, gale, storm surge, and thunderstorm advisories as well. Expect those all to be increased into the red by the latter part of this week. Remember, all these warnings can be found on the uh, JMAs portal or web page here. Now, uh, Japan's not the only place under fire this week due to tropical systems, though. Let's look out here towards the west, just southwest of Hong Kong, towards the east of Hanai. This is now Tropical Storm Talim. Now, Talim has actually been surprising us here the last couple days. It is starting to develop up beyond what the original forecast was expecting it here. And at this time, though, it is already feeding off the southwest monsoon, pushing in uh, from um, the Indochina Peninsula here. So expect some heavy rainfall actually across much of Vietnam, over towards Laos and even Thailand, really being assisted by the storm. And then through the next couple days, it's actually expected to start to foul a gucho off here towards the northeast really running just along the eastern seaboard of southeastern china here and then eventually affecting taiwan we have been talking about exceptionally heavy flooding rains across much of taiwan and southeastern china last uh, several weeks now and if this storm system does end up going in that direction, it's going to bring in that much more precipitation with it. Right now, we're actually looking at the GFS model outlook, and they're expecting it to continue to linger here in the South China Sea for quite some time before moving off to our, towards the northeast on Thursday going into Friday. And it could possibly be affecting their uh, Hong Kong, the Guangdong province of southeastern China, even off there towards Taiwan, and even getting as far northeast as the Fujian province before pushing off and then affecting southern Japan uh, by by the latter part of this week, right after our most recent uh, Typhoon Gucho moving through. So this is definitely not good news at all to systems out here. I know we have also been getting asked the question of the Fujiwara effect. I don't think that's going to be happening here. The systems are just far enough apart that I don't think they're going to be having a direct impact on it. But as uh, Gucho does run off there towards the northeast, it will be following that rainy season boundary. And I think that rainy season boundary is going to be having more of an effect on both of these systems as they start to interact interact with that feature in particular. And this is actually what a JMA is saying on this system. They have it developing and moving off there towards the east a little bit faster than that model outlook does. But here showing uh, by uh, about the morning of the 19th, that would be Tuesday morning, then going into Wednesday morning, and eventually up here uh, to Thursday morning, passing through the Taiwan Strait just southeast of Hong Kong. I know that uh, Signal Force 1 was actually issued here yesterday. Uh, very gusty winds as well. And do check out actually our Typhoon Chasers channel here at westernpacificweather.com. I'll put the uh, link up into the top right near the end of this update but uh, he's going to be uh, trying to uh, get some footage out here today on this tropical storm especially some of the gusty winds around Hong Kong here but also over towards Taiwan once that low starts move this direction that moisture will likely be pushing once again on shore here now as remember there's these mountainous areas here in the center portions of Taiwan so that moisture once it gets pushed in there it's going to be causing uplift causing yet more cloud cover and then yet more heavy rain shower and precipitation so I do think that this area is definitely going to be very keen to more flooding and landslides in the coming. So definitely we'll continue to keep you posted on these continuous developments here in the Western Pacific. But that is all for today, everybody. I do want to also uh, let you know, though, where I got a lot of these satellite images today are from a Sims or the University of Wisconsin. I want to thank them very much for releasing all this information to the public here. But I'll leave you here with this uh, tropical precipitational moisture in the atmosphere graphic. And as always, if you have any questions, 
questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment box below. Also, it helps us out a lot if you hit the like button or share it out. This video out, that is, it definitely more information getting out there to the public helps everybody out. But I do want to remind you, we are not the official agency out here in the Western Pacific. That is at all, actually. Uh, that is the Japan Meteorological Agency here, or JMA. Also, for any of your local agencies, Taiwan has a, a weather bureau forecasting for tropical systems. Uh, China does as well, and so does Hong Kong. So all these areas down here are getting complete coverage from your local official WMO approved agency. So thanks again for watching here, everybody, though. Stay safe out there. And uh, oh, one last thing, though. I will not have another update until about 15 universal time this evening. It's about midnight Japan Standard Time. Do apologize for that. I actually have to go to work today. It is Monday. Uh, but I will be still assisting you here. Please watch on NHK World. I will not be on air today. I will just be feeding and producing uh, today, though. Miss Amai Shoji will be on there. So much a much prettier person than myself. But we definitely will be giving you information throughout the day on the system as it continues to approach the Japanese islands. So please stay safe out there. Bye.